Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs of the Week video. I thought I would mix this one in here while I'm continuing to do your Urban Legends video. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so it's always good to mix things up. This random entry happens to do with a fascinating case that ties into the theory that sometimes UFOs don't have aliens in them, but rather us. The idea that sometimes it's humans, either from the future or from another universe, they are us. In other words, they just happen to be here on our planet. And of course, manning these UFOs, you read about those theories sometimes, such as the case here with this fascinating entry that happened to this poor guy there in Kansas back in 1952. In fact, let's go ahead and let's talk about that now. You're looking at a representation of it, but it's known as the 1952 Pittsburgh, Kansas UFO encounter. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the interesting but brief info associated with this potential human UFO encounter. So here's essentially what happened. It occurred again in 1952, specifically August 25th, very early in the morning at 530 in the morning with a guy by the name of William Squires. I hope I'm saying this nice and correctly. Uh, William Squires. The reason why he was up so early at that time is because he happened to work at a radio station called KOAM there in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Also, um, there in Kansas, that's essentially where it happened, where this UFO encounter occurred in Pittsburgh. But yes, he was driving to work that early in the morning, and as he was passing by an uh, area uh, nearby Frontenac, Kansas, that's when he saw what he described as a low hovering UFO somewhere in the heavily wooded area within his vicinity. And he made it sound like he was essentially the only one during this time period witnessing this, which makes sense. Again, 530 in the morning at a remote location like that, you're not going to have too many other people driving around at that same time. But when he saw this thing, whatever it was, he said that his hair on the back of his neck immediately stood up and he was able to take a very good long look at the actual UFO itself. And that led him to realize with a shocking discovery that there was people inside. But here's essentially how he described this UFO. So he said it was about 75 feet long, maybe 45 feet wide, and then 25 feet high. So it's pretty big. It's a pretty massive object that was out there. And the way he described it was it was just hovering in the air, rocking slightly back and forth. And it happened to be just across a field nearby the highway, again, by that heavily wooded area. And he stated that this object, it looked like as if you took two turtle shells in other words, two empty turtle shells, and then combine them together. You know how it would create almost like a seam towards the middle where the two shells combine? That's what he was describing here. And it was a visible seam all the way across the entire UFO, edge to edge. And then where some of the left or right-hand side parts of the UFO met, at least from his perspective, the left and the right-hand side, that's where he saw a set of small propellers um, jutting out from the UFO, kind of like propellers you would see on anything else that's either airborne or in some cases seaborne. That's what he was seeing here. Uh, they were jutting out in uh, the sides, and according to him, whatever was I guess, consisting of their fans, whatever was the parts of the propellers were moving at a very, very high rate of speed. They were revolving, in other words, at a very high rate of speed. And then he described that the body itself looked like it had an aluminum color, but almost dullish, like almost weathered and not brand new, in other words. And then there were these rectangular windows that made up most of the top part, the top sphere of the actual UFO itself. The thing, though, was these rectangular windows, most of them were completely dulled out. Like, in other words, they had almost like a bluish color to them, but it ranged from dark blue to light blue. It was almost fluctuating is how he described it. It was interesting to read this because I was picturing more on lines of like neon colors, something where it would just change frequency when it comes to how dark and then how light it looked. But yes, he saw this. And interestingly enough, this by this point, he had actually 
stopped his car and he was able to get out and then take a closer look, he stated that behind these darkened windows, which he described also as if somebody took a window shade and then pulled things down on these windows, he saw figures behind them. The figures, though, did not look alien. They did not look like the standard grays that you and I have become familiar with over the years. You know, the big head, the tiny bodies, very, very thin bodies. No, these look like regular human bodies. But the thing was, it was very hard to discern them because of the shadish, blackish, darkened look that the windows had. It just, it was, it was not clear enough for him to be able to see other than, let's say, along the lines of heads and shoulders that looked human. But there was one thing, and this was what really stood out about this encounter that made things absolutely tie into that theory about it being humans. Uh, one single window, which from his vicinity would have been on the left-hand side, one particular window, only one of them was actually clear. It did not have that shaded look on there. It did not have the blackened look as well. It was 100% clear. And through it, that's where he saw a man. He actually saw a person, a human man sitting there, or it looks like wherever he was, uh, if it even was a he, he was there in that window, sitting down on something, staring outwards. He could clearly see that there was a man's head. He could clearly see that there was a man's shoulder. And whoever this was, was just there sitting motionless and then almost looking outwards towards the edge of the object, like if they were peering downward, in other words. But there that was, that person was, whoever this man was within the UFO, clearly seen just through that one window. One window is all that was needed. There was enough um, um, of it to, for, to have this guy, William Squires, realize he was staring at a person. And that's when he said later on, I definitely saw a human being through the window. And that's, of course, what made things so shocking. You would not expect this at all when it comes to your classic UFO encounter. And what also stood out, too, is that as he was getting closer to the UFO, he realized there was this rhythmic throbbing sound that was coming to or from the UFO itself. He didn't get too close, though, unfortunately, because as William Squires said, he got to about 100 feet and something must have triggered an alarm or some other visual observation from the UFO probably saw William Squires coming up from the ground. Either way, though, something happened where all of a sudden the UFO shot straight up to the sky. The way he described it was it rose straight up into the air very quickly, became out of sight even quicker. And the way it sounded like whenever it went up, he said, imagine like a hundred quails suddenly taking off at the same time. You could picture something along the lines of a very large amount of wings suddenly batting at the same time. That's essentially what this sounded like too. And he knew that there was something propelling the UFO because underneath the UFO, the exact spot where it was previously from, whatever vegetation was there, whatever piece of forestry and woods and twigs and branches and grass and leaves and anything else that was there was suddenly blown about. There was such pressure that came from this UFO when it was going upwards that it caused that entire area underneath it to have things strewn about. Very fascinating when I was reading that too because it shows the power that this UFO would have had. And so he was able to have this brief but very memorable encounter. He took some other people, some officials there from the radio station. Well, I'm sure once he explained everything that happened to him, back to that spot and they too became witnesses they stated that sure enough in that area there the vegetation and other locations seemed to look completely astroom it looked like somebody had taken off from that location something in other words and it had caused that area to look disturbed but then that was it that was pretty much as far as the encounter that William Squires there had in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Fascinating stuff, no, when it comes to this, this guy going to a radio station for his job in the early morning. I bet he had no idea that he would run into this very memorable UFO encounter, especially since it happens to have humans or potential humans within it as well. And then afterwards, there were some Air Force officials that took a look at everything that he was stating 
And while they didn't 100% necessarily say that it was a UFO, what they did say was that his reliability as a witness was quote unquote good. So that's essentially the closest affirmation he got that what he saw, he wasn't making things up. It wasn't them telling proof that yes, it was the UFO, but you can tell that that's pretty close altogether. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all the information tied to this very memorable encounter. If anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. What about those of you there in the Pittsburgh, Kansas area, maybe by the wooded area locations there uh, for near Frontenac, Kansas? Have you heard of any other strange UFO encounters? by that location. If so, maybe some current ones. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on there too. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.